is our second lesson on derivatives of trig functions, where now that we know what the derivative of sine and cos are, right? We know the derivative of sine is cos, derivative of cos is negative sine. Oh, and also we know the derivative of tan is secant squared. Now that we know those, we're then going to find the derivative of more complicated functions where we'll also need to use some of the other derivative rules we learned earlier in the course. We'll need to use our product rule, quotient rule, and chain rule. And let's focus in on chain rule for a second. Notice chain rule is when you have a function of a function. So if we're differentiating f at g of x, we think of f as the outside function and g as the inside function. When we're doing that, over here tells you the derivative rule. You do the derivative of the outside function with respect to the inside function times the derivative of the inside function. So if we apply that to trigonometric functions, let's say we have sine of a function. So the argument of the trig function is itself a function. So we have sine of f at x. How do we do this? How do we differentiate that? Well, think of sine x as the outside function and f at x as the inside function. So the, we would do the derivative of sine with respect to the inside function. So derivative of sine is cos. We'd have cos of f at x times the derivative of the inside function, which we could write as f prime of x. So hopefully you see there how we use chain rule to differentiate a trig function where its argument is itself a function of x that needs to be differentiated. And it may become more clear as we do some examples. Like for example, notice that the argument of this trig function is a function of x that can be differentiated. So we would have to use chain rule for this. When finding the derivative of this function, sine of 2x, I would do the derivative of the outside function with respect to the inside function. And we think of sine as the outside function. So derivative of sine is cos, so we do cos with respect to the inside function, leave the inside function exactly as it is, but then that needs to be multiplied by the derivative of the inside function. And the derivative of 2x is just 2. And we probably wouldn't write it in this format. This factor of 2 would probably move to the front of cos of 2x. So it would look like 2 times cos of 2x. And there's nothing else we could simplify there. That's good. How about part b? This one, sine squared of x, it may help if before I do any differentiating, you rewrite this as sine of x in brackets squared. Sine squared x and what I've written here mean the exact same thing. It's just I'm writing it in this format so that you can see what we need to do is chain rule again. And a special case of the chain rule, which is the power of a function rule. And if we look back to the table, if we look at the power of a function rule, notice we have this scenario where the base of our power is itself a function. So to differentiate it, we bring the exponent down, write it as the coefficient, leave the base of the power exactly as it is, reduce the exponent by one, and then multiply that by the derivative of the base of the power. So this is just a special case of the chain rule. So here, when we find the derivative, bring the exponent down, write it as the coefficient, reduce the exponent by one, and then that needs to be multiplied by the derivative of the inside function. And our inside function this time is the base of the power, which is sine x, and the derivative of sine x is cos x. So I'll just rewrite this without the brackets. So I just have two sine x cos x. And I would accept that as a final answer, but if you remember your double angle identity, this is equal to sine of two x. Part C, y prime equals, now think of the outside function as sine and the inside function as x squared. So differentiate the outside with respect to the inside function. So that'd be cosine of x squared. And then that needs to be multiplied by the derivative of the inside function, which is this x squared. So the derivative of x squared needs to be multiplied by this. And the derivative of x squared is 2x. So what I have is 2x cos of x squared. Part D is the first time we're going to need another rule. We're going to need our product rule. So I have a product of two functions here. I have an x squared times a sine x. So we'll have to use product rule. Product rule tells me to do the derivative of the first function. So derivative of x squared is 2x times the second function plus the derivative of the second function. So derivative of sine x is cos x times the first function. And we could leave this in standard form. I mean, I would clean it up a little bit. I would move that factor of x squared in front of the cos x. So it'd be x squared cos x. Or if you wanted to, you could put this into factored form. I have two terms, one here, one here. They both have an x. We could common factor out an x. So I would have x 
times 2 sine x plus x cos x. Either of those last two lines would be fine for a final answer. Example 2 is just more of the same. Find more derivatives with respect to x. So y prime equals. I want the derivative of cos of 3x. So the argument of this cosine function is a function of x. So I'm going to need to do chain rule. So I'm going to differentiate cosine with respect to 3x. So that'd be negative sine of 3x. But then that needs to be multiplied by the derivative of the inside function, 3x. So the derivative of 3x is 3. So I'll simplify this a bit. I can do this 3 times this negative 1 and get negative 3 sine of 3x. Part B. This is really similar to the last one. I need to differentiate 2 times sine of pi x. Well, the constant multiple rule tells me that um, the derivative of 2 times a function is going to be equal to 2 times the derivative of that function. So I just need to do 2 times the derivative of sine of pi x. And to find the derivative of sine of pi x, I differentiate sine, which is cosine, with respect to the inside function. So leave the argument exactly as it is. And then that needs to be multiplied by the derivative of the inside function. The derivative of pi x is pi. So let me simplify this a bit. Let me just put the factors of 2 and pi beside each other. So I have 2 pi cos of pi x. Part C. This time I'm differentiating a tan function. And the argument of the tan function is a function of x that can be differentiated. So we'll need chain rule again here. So if I want g prime of x, I'll start by doing the derivative of tan with respect to the inside function. So the derivative of tan is secant squared. So secant squared, leave the inside function exactly as it is. And then this all needs to be multiplied by the derivative of the inside function. And the derivative of x squared plus 3x is 2x plus 3. And we could leave it just like this, or we could expand it out. Either way would be fine. I think I'll leave it in factored form. Example three, more differentiating with respect to x. This time we have power of a function, and I find it helps people a lot if we rewrite the way this trig function is being cubed. Rewrite it as a cos x being cubed. Rewrite it like this. We can see that the base of the power is cos x, and the exponent on that base is three. Now I'm going to differentiate by using the chain rule bring the exponent down, move it in front, leave the base of the power exactly as it is, reduce the exponent by one, and then we need to multiply that by the derivative of the base of the power, the inside function. So the derivative of cos x is negative sine x. And all I would do here is multiply the three and the negative one together, get negative three. Then I'll put the factor of sine x and the factor of cos x that's being squared, which technically we're supposed to write like this, cos squared x. Part B. Once again, I'm going to do a rewrite of the format of this to make the differentiating easier. So 2, and then that sine cubed x, I know that really means it's a sine x that's being cubed, minus 4 times a cos x that is being squared. And now I can see I'm just going to have to do chain rule twice. So f prime of x equals 3 times 2 is 6. Leave the base of the power, reduce the exponent by 1, and then multiply that by the derivative of the inside function, derivative of sine x is cos x. So that's the derivative of the first term. Minus, now we'll, do, now we'll do the derivative of the second term. 2 times 4 is 8. Leave the base of the power, reduce the exponent by 1, and multiply that by the derivative of the inside function. The derivative of cos x is negative sine x. And we can do some simplifying here. It may be helpful for this one to do some common factoring. If I look at the coefficients 6 and 8, well, I could take a 2 out from both of those. Both terms have a sine x, and both terms have a cos x. So I will divide both of the terms, this term and this term, by what I took out. So when I divide the first term by what I took out, 6 divided by 2 is 3. Sine squared x divided by sine x is sine x. And cos x divided by cos x is 1, so those cancel. And then... Um, well, the second term, uh, it's subtracting a negative, so I know it's going to be plus. And 8 divided by the 2 I took out is 4. Oh, and the cos is cancel and the sines cancel. So that's it. 2 sine x cos x times 3 sine x plus 4. And I can actually simplify this a bit further. Uh, I'm going to put this factor out front. I think it'll look less confusing that way. So I have 3 sine x plus 4. And now I'm going to put this factor second. 
And that is actually a double angle identity, two sine x cos x. Remember I reminded you earlier, that's equal to sine of two x. So there's my final answer. Okay, we're almost done. Example four, differentiate with respect to t. Okay, our variable is t here, so that's fine. The derivative would equal, I'm going to need product rule because I have a function of t times another function of t. So when I use product rule, I'll have to do derivative of the first function. So derivative of t cubed is three t squared. That needs to be multiplied by the second function, cos t, plus the derivative of the second function, which would be negative sine t, times the first function. And then the best way to simplify this one, I think would just be to take out a common factor. So I could take out a t squared from both terms. And then the first term, what I would have is three cos t, plus a negative is minus, t cubed divided by t squared is t, and that sine t is still there. There we go, there's the answer for that one. And I don't know why I have square brackets, they could be round. D, our last just simple finding derivative question. This is our most complicated one. Let me just do a rewrite of the original function first. So I'm just going to change that cos squared t, rewrite that as cos t squared. And now I have two functions of t that are being multiplied together, that one and that one. So I'll need product rule. And within that product rule, I'm going to have to do chain rule. So when I do the derivative of the first function, I know that's going to be cos of 4t times the derivative of the inside function, which is 4. And I'm actually just going to put that 4 in front of the cos of 4t. That needs to be multiplied by the second function. So I have to multiply that by cos of t squared, which I'll write as cos squared t. Plus, now I need to do the derivative of the second function. So 2 times cos of t to the power of 1 multiplied by the derivative of the inside function, which is negative sine t. And that needs to be multiplied by the first function, sine of 4t. And now we look, what can we simplify here? I think there's some common factoring I could do between the two terms. And let me just box off the two terms, right? They're separated by the addition sign. Oh, and actually before I do that, I'm just going to combine this plus and this negative one, I'm gonna change it to, I'm just gonna combine those and change this to minus. I'm going to now look for a common factor between those two terms I've boxed. So if I look at the coefficients four and two, I could common factor it too. I notice they both have factors of cosine. This one has two of them, this one has one of them, so I could take out a cosine. And now I'll divide both of my terms by what I took out. Four divided by two is two. Cos squared divided by cos is cos. And there's still that cos of 4t with that first term. Minus 2 divided by 2 is 1. Cos divided by cos is 1. And I still have this sine and sine of 4t. And I think that's all we can do for that one. And here's our last example. Differentiate y equals x times tan of 2x minus 1. So we have two functions of x being multiplied, once again, we are going to need to use product rule. So y prime equals derivative of the first function, well, derivative of x is one, multiply that by the second function, plus derivative of the second function, derivative of tan is secant squared, leave the argument exactly as it is, but then that needs to be multiplied by the derivative of the argument, and the derivative of two x minus one is two, and then that derivative needs to be multiplied by the first function, x. And then we'll just do a little cleaning up of this. So I just have tan of 2x minus 1, plus I'll put this 2x out front, 2x secant squared, 2x minus 1. Okay, that's it. That's all the derivatives we're going to practice for trig functions. Make sure you do the practice questions so you get comfortable using our chain rule, product rule, quotient rule that um, involve trig functions.